Hey y'all, welcome to this video where we're going to tackle a project in Go, namely we're going to make Pong. Here's what we're going to have in the end. It's a one player Pong game where I can move the paddle up and down and try to avoid the ball getting past me. We're also going to track our current score and high score. This is going to be a pretty good introduction to a 2D game engine called a Beat Engine. It's the most widely used game engine and there's even a few Switch games written in it. So if you want to go and write something more complex, you should be able to after watching this video. Let's get to it. I'm in my folder here for this project. I'm going to initialize it with my GitHub repo where the source code for this video is going to be. Let's open main.go where we're going to write all our code for this game. Let's start with installing the game engine. So we'll import a beat engine v2, then run go mod tidy to install the package. And there you go, you got a game engine installed. All right, so we'll define some constants, namely the screen width and height in pixels, and the ball and paddle speeds. These control how many pixels these objects move per game update. By default, the beat engine updates the game state 60 times per second. Each update of the game state is called a tick. A speed of 6 for the paddle, for example, means that the paddle will remove at 6 pixels per tick or 250 pixels per second. Now let's create structs in which we'll store the state of the game. We'll create a generic object struct which will represent an object, i.e. our paddle or ball, and its x and y coordinates as well as its width and height. Note that 0, 0 is the top left corner in our coordinate system. We'll create a paddle struct which will be composed of the object type, and our ball struct which will have, in addition to the object properties, a dxdt and a dydt property. These represent the x and y speed of the ball at any point in time. Finally, we got the game struct. We'll hold the state of the entire game including the paddle, the ball, and the current and high scores. In our main function, we're going to call a few abeat engine functions to set up our game. We'll set the window title and window size. We'll start with an empty game struct. Now, abeat engine has a run game function which starts everything up and takes a pointer to the game state. But we're not done just yet. The run game function requires a game type to implement three methods, namely the layout, update, and draw methods. The layout method controls the size of our window, so every frame this method is called. For us, we'll keep the window size constant and just return the same values every time. We got the draw method, which takes in the beat engine image type. This too is called every frame and is used to draw our objects to the screen. Finally, the update method is where we update our game state, i.e. do things like calculate the ball position, the paddle position, and update the score. This is called 60 times a second. All right, so let's run main.go and test this out. All right, looks good. Our empty game state is running. Now let's make ourselves a Pong game. We'll start with a draw method, but first we're going to import a few things. Namely the vector package and colors for drawing our ball and paddle, as well as a text package, some fonts, and the FMT package we're going to use to display our scores. Now in our draw method, we can use the draw filled rectangle function from the vector package to draw rectangles representing the paddle and the ball. Using the text package here, we're drawing the current score and the high score, setting the Y coordinates so that the high score is just below the current score. Now the paddle moves based on input from the user, so let's make a method for the paddle struct called move on key press. We use the beat engine to check if the down arrow is being pressed. If so, we increment the paddle's Y coordinate by the paddle speed constant we defined above, similar for the up arrow. Now this method needs to be called when the game state's updated, so we'll add it to the update method. This method again is called 60 times every second. The ball on the other hand moves on its own, so we'll create a move method. Here we'll update the coordinates of the ball by the current ball speed in the x and y directions. Let's also add this to the update method. Next we're going to define a bunch of methods for controlling the game in general. So we got the reset method which will reset the ball to the start speed and position and set the score back to zero. Now we also got to calculate whether the ball hit any of the walls. For the rightmost wall we're just going to reset the game. If the ball hits the leftmost wall we reverse the x speed simulating the ball bouncing off the wall. For the top and bottom walls we reverse the y speed. Lastly, we got the collide with paddle method. Here we check if the ball's coordinates are within the paddle area, signifying a collision. If so, we reverse the x speed, causing the ball to bounce in the opposite direction off the paddle. We'll also increment the score and update the high score. So let's add these methods to our update method as well. 
Lastly, we'll go back to the main function and fill out our game state with our parameters. Setting things like the paddle size and initial position, and same for the ball, but here we also set the initial ball velocity. Now if we run our game, we got ourselves a working Pong game, which is kind of fun. Now you can expand on this if you want by adding another player or levels or something like that. And that's it, you're now a game developer. Thanks for watching.